author who has a knack for writing about trailblazing women has a brand new book. Cody's standing by with the New York Times bestselling author Chris Enns. Oh, Chris. Chris Enns is, is one of my favorite people and uh, one of the best researchers I have ever met in my whole entire life. And so when she tells me she has a new book, I immediately call her immediately right there. So Chris is joining us now uh, via the little tiny box for some reason. We're having some technical issues. But uh, Chris, tell us about this new book because it's very timely. Uh, the topic that you're talking about, because we're coming up on an important right. date. Right. The book is called No Place for a Woman, the, uh, the Struggle for Suffrage in the Wild West. And a lot of people don't realize that uh, this was a movement that started east of the Hudson, but it was realized west of the Mississippi. I did not realize that either. I knew, it like yeah. you know, like like everybody. I guess the history books kind of glossed up there. So, what part did women in the West play in this important movement? Well, you know, here's the other interesting fact about this: is that the Nineteenth Amendment was written by um, a gentleman and his wife right here in Nevada County, and it was introduced into Congress in 1878. But it was drafted by a gentleman, a senator by the name of Aaron Sargent and his wife, Ellen Clark Sargent, who lived in Nevada County. And um, they boarded a train in 1871 from California, going all the way back to Washington, D.C. And they meet up with this wonderful woman in Wyoming by the name of Susan B. Anthony. Maybe you've heard of her. <laughs> um, she's, got a, she's got a dollar bill named after her, I mean, a little dollar coin named after her. So with her little image on it. Um, so they meet up with her and they travel uh, cross country and uh, Susan B. Anthony leaves them in Chicago. Ellen and Aaron go all the way to Washington, D.C. But during that time period, they draft what we now know as the 19th Amendment. Get out. <clears throat> is that amazing or what? That is amazing. Right why, here. Did, why didn't we know that? <laughs> what was that being I, hidden? I, you know, it's... It's just, it's everywhere. It's its history. It's laying on the ground. You pick it up, you shake it, and there it is. Yeah. It's just amazing. Uh, I'm not, I'm not that, completely shocked uh, by hearing that women in the West played a, a, a vital role in this movement because women in the West had some power. I don't think people quite understand what power women in the West, because like here in California, that was one of the first spots where they could own property. Right. And, you know, the thing is, and this is one of those little um, not very attractive side of women's suffrage that you want to bring up. But let's bring it up anyway. Um, <laughs> you know, women, um, the first women to really have the right to vote were um, your soil doves, your prostitutes, mm -hmm. um, because they could own property. And if you own property and you purchased a license, as many of these women had to do in some of your uh, bigger communities, had to purchase a license to, to operate a house of ill repute, those funds went to um, to support your police department and if you were lucky enough a fire department and because of that they got the right to vote in local elections and um, they kind of set the stage for that so you know 